What's going on growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's a beautiful day here and me and Tuck want to make sure we're taking full advantage of it. So today I want to show you how to build your own cheap and easy tomato trellis. Let's go! Right here is the row of tomatoes that we're going to be building the trellis for. And this bed is 10 feet long. We have tomatoes spaced one foot apart. They're really close together. And we did that because we're going to be building the trellis, growing them vertically, saving us a lot of space. The first thing we need to do is measure the length of the bed because the top of the trellis is going to be the same exact as the inside of this bed. So we're going to measure it. And I did it by the square foot method, so it's exactly 10 feet long, this bed. So we're going to make sure we cut the top piece the same length. We measured the length of our bed, and we know that it's 10 feet. So the top has to also be 10 feet. What I have right here is a two by eight. And what I'm gonna do is actually just rip this two by eight and cut it into three separate pieces so we can try to make our trellis out of just one piece of wood. The other thing about this two by eight is it's 12 feet long, not 10. I want that extra two feet so I can help build support for the side of it as well. Before I get started, I just wanted to mention a few things about the wood. One of them is you'll notice that this isn't pressure treated wood, it's just regular wood. And what I'm gonna do is use some linseed oil to help seal it, but I don't wanna put pressure treated wood in my garden. Another thing is this is two by eight, but it's actually really only seven and a quarter inches after it's planed down and stuff. So we're gonna take the seven and a quarter inches and cut it into three different pieces. So two and a quarter on each side, and then we're gonna be left with another piece in the center. I'm building this tomato trellis out of one piece of wood because it will be cheaper. And if you wanna do this yourself, but you don't wanna do all the cutting, when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, just tell them exactly what you want. Say you want a two by eight and give them the measurements for how you want to cut. They'll cut it there perfectly. It'll be so easy on their track saw and you don't have to actually take the hassle of cutting it yourself. I'm not a professional on the saw, so it would be hard for me to cut this whole entire thing straight the whole way. So what I'm gonna do is just measure it and then I'll just bump my saw up to this straight edge and then I'll just guide right along it. That'll give me a nice straight cut. So if you don't have a straight edge like this, you could just use a straight piece of wood. It'll work basically the same. The first piece that we're going to cut is gonna be two and a quarter inches, but we're gonna be bumping our saw up to this straight edge. So we need to add an additional inch and a quarter, which will give us three and a half inches plus another 16th inch, because we need to account for the distance from the blade to the blade guard and also the thickness of the blade. Got the first one measured. Now I'm just gonna move down in four different spots and get that same measurement so I could line my straight edge up. We have that all marked. Now we're going to take our straight edge and just line it up on our marks as best we can. Then we're just gonna clamp it down. Before we get cutting, we wanna make sure the depth of our blade is right. So we'll just adjust that just a little deeper than, than what we need to cut. Takes me a minute on this saw, it's not the best saw. So about there looks good. And then we'll just push it down. Make sure when you're adjusting your blade depth that you don't have your saw plugged in or the battery in if it's battery power. We're just gonna bump the saw up against the side guide and start cutting. We're just gonna finish right there and then I'll bring the guide down and we'll just keep cutting. So it just slid the clamp down and tightened it. Now we're just gonna drop the saw in and then just continue cutting. First piece all cut, looks good. So when we cut this down, this is gonna be one of the sides. The other cut piece is gonna be a side and then we're gonna have the top. So I'm just gonna do the same thing for this other side piece. I wanted to mention before I uh, keep cutting, that when I do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna measure from the cut side. I'm gonna flip this over and then measure my two and a quarter inches from the uncut side again. This way my two posts are both from uncut sides and the center with the cut side, that's gonna be the top. There we go, all those pieces are cut. Now let's just take the clamps off and I'll show you how they're all cut. And you can see we've got three basically equidistant sides, sizes. These are gonna be the sides, and this is gonna be the top. So if we put them on top of each other, you can see now we've got three pieces from just that one piece. So pretty convenient. All, all we needed was a uh, circular saw. You don't need the greatest tools to get some of this stuff done. Now let's get this top piece measured. Again, it's gonna be the same exact length as the inside of our bed, which would be exactly 10 feet, but we're going to add that extra inch and a quarter plus the 16th so that I could uh, bump this up and cut it to get it straight. 
we have all that wood cut and ready. Now let's start putting the troughs together. So let's take these pieces of wood. These two side rails are gonna be the two outside pieces and then this is gonna be the top here. I'm just going to use these, these little clamps here to make sure everything's square and lined up. These clamps are awesome. I love using them. I'll leave a link in the description, but I got these just at a local uh, garage sale or something. I'm sure you could find them there too, but I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick them up. It makes it really easy if you're only one person trying to do this on your own, because I know it could be tough. And we want to make sure the top part is, is resting on top of this because that's where all the weight's going to be coming down on. And I wanted to do it from the bottom so I could see my gaps and stuff. And that first one was just to get the length. Now I'll pull this back a little bit. Those line up nicely. Now I can just screw and put my brackets in. So this is all lined up how I want it. What I'm gonna do to connect it is use this L bracket right here. I'm just gonna put that in the corner and then connect it. And then I'll probably do an additional screw down the top right there. So I'm just gonna make sure I pre-drill this L bracket and then put some screws in. And I'm not gonna use the same size screws. We've got longer screws for here. So it sinks in nicely. Looks all good lined up. One on the other side. The nice thing about the L bracket is it's, it's 90 degrees, so it's gonna help hold that shape too. That one's in. Now I'm just gonna screw one screw at the top to go down, just to help hold it a little bit. Then I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. This is a big like three and a half inch screw. Whenever you're doing this, you wanna especially make sure that you're pre-drilling. If you don't pre-drill, you could split your wood in and then ruin basically a lot of the work that you did. There we go, that last screw was in. And this is gonna be put into the ground. I'm gonna cut these two sides down a little bit and they're gonna be in the ground about two feet. So the whole thing is gonna be attached to the bed as well. It's gonna be a lot stronger when it's all attached together. Now, what we're gonna do is measure and drill holes this way we could run string and tie it down to the tomatoes. My first tomato starts six inches in and then every one after that is every 12 inches. So six, 18, and then additional 12 inches. We'll just keep going down, down. So 30, 42. I have these all measured where my tomatoes are gonna be in the raised bed, matched up. Now I'm just gonna drill a hole and then run a string through it. The only issue is right where I have it measured up, I have a screw on the other side. So I'm just gonna have to push it over to the side like this. Then we're going to do the same thing on all the markings. Now I'm just going to linseed oil the whole thing to help preserve it. Just going to do that real quick. I'm going to be super liberal and just go crazy with it. I got this all linseed oil that sat for like 10 or 15 minutes. Now I'm just going to wipe off the excess. What I want to do next is actually take one of the pieces that I cut off and I'm just going to actually cut this into a steak and I'll show you why in a second. Next, I'm gonna dig out this section right here. And the reason I cut the steak with this piece is because I wanna put this in and then knock this down to about a foot, two feet. This way when I drop in my trellis, I don't have to hit it down from the top or anything. It'll be able to just drop it in the right place. And then I'll screw the trellis into the side of this bed. It'll get a lot stronger. So again, this piece is really just a guide or in a sense, just to get me deep into the ground. Another thing is I don't wanna hit a pole down into here because my well is right over there so I don't want to hit any water lines. So we'll just knock this in. And I haven't measured on the back side at a foot so I know I'm, I'm one foot in the ground right now. I'd say that's about a foot and a half. And I'm just going to knock it around to loosen up the soil a little bit. And then I'll mark it so I have the same uh, height on the other one. So now when we drop our stake in, we won't have to, we'll be able to get pretty deep into there. That's how deep I went into the ground. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Ideally, you should be doing this before you put your tomatoes in, but I just decided I wanted to switch up how I'm doing a trellis this year. I've always used bamboo in the past, but not everyone can access that. And sometimes it's hard to get, and if you wanna buy it, it's super expensive. So this could be a cheap, easy alternative, and I think it's gonna work well. There we go. Now we're gonna knock this out. This way when we bring our trellis and it just slides in nice and easy. This will also tell us how much of the trellis we want to cut off. I noticed as I was hitting it in that I really should have turned it this way because that's how it's going to be, the trellis is going to be going in. So I'll just reform the hole a little bit. That's okay. 
That's why this piece is a sacrificial piece that we're just making the hole with. So for the height of our trellis, I'm gonna go with seven feet. I'm pretty tall, so I can reach that. To get that, we're gonna measure from the top here, seven feet. And then after I get that seven feet, I'm just gonna measure this additional uh, measurement right here, which is about 18 inches. I'm gonna add that to it, so then when this whole thing drops in the ground, it's still seven feet off the raised bed. I have the frame in here now. I had someone help me bring it in. I think I can get it up on my own. I've got this clamp down here to help me get it up. But with those holes pre-dug, it should make a big difference. Once it sets in, it'll be easy. There we go. And I could reach it pretty easily. So it's gonna be like that. I'll make sure it's down all the way. We'll measure the height to make sure the height is the same on both sides. That'll make it so it's all level because this bed is level. And then I'll make sure it's all straight here and I'll put a screw in from the back just to start. What I'm gonna do is measure this 15 inches and then mark the center, which is seven and a half. And then make sure that this is centered. That dropped down a little more. Make sure that's centered like that when I screw it in. I measured the height from the top of the raised bed to the bottom of the trellis. So this one was a little bit uh, lower. So that other side I can just raise up just a little bit. It'll be much easier. I'm gonna put this side in first. What I'm going to do is just dig some of this out. This way I can screw right into the side of the raised bed. It'll make it much easier. So I wanna make sure that this is straight and centered on that. So we want this as centered as we can and as straight as we can. And the screw will help pull the bottom in. And we'll put a couple, we'll put two screws in. I've got these real long screws too. So it'll help strengthen it. Then we'll just put one more screw at the top here. That one's all in. Now I'm just gonna Double measure the height of this one. It should be like 88 and a half inches. So 88 and a half. Now we're gonna make sure over here that we've got exactly 88 and a half. This one I checked already was 88. So all I'm gonna have to do is just pull it up a half inch and then screw it in. There we go, that last screw was in. Looks nice and it's all perfectly level now, which is convenient. And what I'm gonna do next is just add a couple supports on the side just so it doesn't get blown away too strongly by the wind because this is going to be heavy when it has all the tomatoes on it. So here are some of the leftover pieces that I had, the excess. I'm going to make those into the, into the supports on the side. I'm just going to cut this one in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. I have the pieces cut that I'm going to use for braces. I'm going to set it up like this, but how I'm going to mark is I'm going to put it past on the back side and then just like that. And then what I'm going to do is just mark this back side like this. And then we'll cut it. And then after I cut the bottom, it'll look like this. And then we'll bump it up to this back side here and mark it again. And then after we cut it both sides, it'll end up looking like this. So that's what we're going for right now. So there's no need to measure this and stuff. Like I mentioned, just have it up here and then mark the bottom, cut it, put it in and then mark the top. With everything square and level how it is, all I should need to do is just use this as a template and then cut a few more of them. So that's all we're gonna do. Just mark it, bump it up, and then just mark it. And that'll be our cuts. I have this one all marked. I'm gonna cut it now, and I'm just gonna do it by freehand. It's not gonna look perfect because I'm not the best at this, but I think it'll still come out good. Let's take them in, see how they fit, and then screw them on. I have all four of those cut. Now we're just gonna line them up and put them in. This will really strengthen the whole thing up. We'll just take these like this. And I'll make it flush on the back side here. So what we're gonna do is uh, pre-drill and then screw this one in. Then I've got like two and a half inch screws here. And what I'm doing is I'm uh, making sure it's flush on this side and then also flush on the bottom. There you go. And I'll put a screw at the bottom there as well. Now we'll just get this side on, same thing. Now I'm just gonna put this top screw down. 
and that'll just go right into the bed. Really strengthening that up. Can't even move that thing now. There we go, that side's in. I think it came out pretty good. And we're just gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Again, really strengthening that up. And then we'll backfill. The idea was that I really didn't want to, it's relatively tall, so when the wind blows, if the tomatoes are heavy this way, I don't want it racking back and forth. So that's why we put these, these bottom braces in. If we need to in the future, put additional braces on, we can. I can put L brackets up right here, or I can put just a, a beam going across. But again, the idea was just using one piece of wood to build the whole entire thing. There we go, the final screw in. Looks fantastic. Now what we need to do is just take our twine and we already have these pre-drilled holes right above where our tomatoes are gonna be. So let's get that uh, twine in, put it in. Now I'm just gonna start running the twine through. And if you wanted, you could have put eye hooks down here. It just would have cost a little more or you could have drilled holes just a little bigger, but that's okay. So what we'll do is just take this and tie it at the top. This is just a rough for demonstration. Just tie this at the top like this. Then we'll run this all the way down and it'll be at the exact spot of a tomato, which is how we wanted it. And then we'll tie this around the base of the tomato once it just gets a little bigger. So we'll tie that around the base of the tomato and then we'll continue to just wrap the tomato, twist it around like this. It'll grow up the stem. So this is a simple way to trellis and it works really well. And I, like I said, I've done steaks in the past but I know this is an excellent technique and I think we're gonna get a lot of production out of it. It's gonna be a lot easier to manage, I think, than the post because sometimes they tip over a little bit. So as these plants grow, we'll continue to bring you by for the progress and show you just how well the trellis is actually working. That's today's video growers, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you like the trellis. I'm happy with the way it came out. Tuck said it looks good, so I guess it's Tuck approved. And I'm happy we were able to do it with just the one piece of wood and for really cheap. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And whenever you're shopping on Amazon, do not forget to start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. I'll put it right in the description. Me and Tuck, we back at you with another one real soon. We out.